Hello everyone, it's Tom here from TechNexus and thanks for joining me on today's video. So instead of jumping into Plant, we're going to have a look at uh, combining Plant 3D with Navisworks and then ultimately to get into Infoworks so we can get a good idea on what our site is going to look like. So here I have Navisworks and I'm going to append my plant models that I created before. So we jump into the area. So I'm going to look at the AutoCAD files themselves directly. So I've got my piping models and my structural models. So for now I'm just going to bring in the three structural models. And there you can see we have uh, it's the, the base, which is the structure. And then we've got drawing number two, which is uh, our north-south rack. And then model number three, which is our east-west rack. You can go through and refine this, um, put materials on it. We, you know, we can always go through and delete or, or hide uh, the grid lines here. Um, but again, for this exercise, for this video, I'm not going to do that just now, um, just for, for sake of time. So once I do have it inside Navisworks, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this NWF as a, I'll just call it overall site and I'm also going to export it out as an FBX so there are a couple options here in regards to limiting or, or file format or, or version um, just for this again I'm going to leave it as is but you can go down to you got 2011, 2012, 13 um, but again, just for this, I know that it works as, as it is. If you have issues or errors, sometimes it might be a good idea to look at these advanced options, but I'm just going to say okay to that. And again, same thing, I'm going to call it overall site FBX. So now that I'm done and dusted and happy with that file, I'm inside Infoworks now. So if you've been following my videos, you'll, you'll know that we've already gone into Infoworks at some point and had a quick look at it, but this is... Uh, my little model of this is just going to be somewhere out in the outback uh, of Australia and I am going to place this plant uh, let's say we'll, we'll throw it over here somewhere so it looks like there's already been some uh, some earthworks or some quarrying there we're going to put our plant on this side of, of this road here anyway so to do that uh, I got two options I've got coverage areas and I'll actually show you sort of what they look like. So I'm going to make that a, let's just call it a grass coverage area. So I'm just going to place in a, a rectangle here that I've, I've just dynamically done with the mouse. Again, it's nothing really that, that special for the time being. Uh, and then what I can do is lift it up and the reason I'm doing that is just to show you what happens with the coverage area So it might be a bit hard to see on the video, but the, the land has kind of uh, Draped itself from this level down to the natural ground and what we can do is You know, we can see the the, the contours on that uh, if we switch to engineering view So as we zoom in and out We can see the major and minor contours appear and disappear the thing with that is, so we do have a manual style, we have a rule style, but we don't have any way to sort of maybe play around with the, the slope and the, the levels around uh, the, the coverage area. So for that reason, I'm just going to delete that. Uh, if I go back to my plan view, and I'm going to put in a land area. So similar sort of thing here, I'm going to type in sort of those values just with the mouse so it looks, looks like it's around 140 odd by about 30 odd meters in each length and then when I do a, the similar function with the land area with the coverage area that I do, do for the land area you can see it grades the land around but I do have options now for manual grading so if I click on the tile here I'll go to more styles and then out of the box, Infrax has some different grading styles already in here. So there's 10 meter, 1 meters of concrete, 10 meters of grass, 3 to 1 cut and fill, 3 meters of rock, 
and you've got two different options here, 3 to 1 and 0.1 to 1, or 3 to 1 and 2 to 1 of stone cut and grass fill. So I like the 3 to 1 grass cut, and you can see it places at 3 to 1 our grass sort of area there for that land. Okay, to look at all of those, under this orange ribbon here, if you scroll down towards the bottom, you have the style palette. When you do click on that, over on the right hand side, you are now presented with a whole bunch of uh, sub palettes in here, I guess, if you want to call them, of all of the different uh, other styles that are available for uh, particular functions inside of InfraWorks there. So if you scroll down the bottom, there's a couple of up and down arrows. Scroll all the way down, get to the grading, and then you can see the styles that I've used there. So this is a three to one. If I click on the pencil down the bottom, I'm now presented with the dialog box for that. So cut and fill are using the same style, and that's the, the grading material for it. We can set limits for that as well if you really wanted to. Now for this top area, it is has a material of gravel, mixed gravel. If you click on that palette there, again, we can go through and, and choose whether it's mixed gravel or sand, uh, tall grass, worn white, bricks, river stone even, um, grey diamond, whatever. So again, I'm just going to cancel that just, just so I can leave that in there. So Again, this is just me conceptualizing my thoughts for this plant project about where it's going to live. Now I want to add in my plant project. I click on the button here where it says create manager model and click on data sources. The data sources pane then appears with the existing data sources. So I want to add a new one under the 3D model entry. And then I go to my desktop and I bring in the overall site file, which is the FBX. Now it has parked it there. InfraWorks is not going to place it until you physically locate it or interactively place it. So we also need to define the type. So in here there's a couple options for something like that plant. I can put it in there as a building. Uh, I could put it in there as a point of interest or city furniture. I'm just going to put it in as a building and then interactively place it and then you can see here that with my mouse I can stick it somewhere on the site so double click it and if I know any of these values I can come in here and, and type them in and then I click on close and refresh and then we end up with our plant there on the site and you can come through and adjust so you can see here that it's probably a little bit off there so I can lift it up above grade a little bit more and then sort of get a bit more of the slab showing but there you have our plant in its maybe alleged real world location if I switch to conceptual view and then you can see there also that changes the styles of everything and you can see we can even see the shadows falling on that model there as well so if we do end up with a large uh, model we can see where the shadows are going to fall for that so uh, hopefully that ex explains and demonstrates some of the features that you could use within the AEC collections for your your plant project uh, join me tomorrow tomorrow for our video continuing on with the actual plant itself and then as we progress through the coming days and weeks we'll slowly update this model and get a good idea on uh, what our plant is going to look like in, in its real world position here in the middle of Australia somewhere. So thanks for watching, thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, please subscribe to my channel and if you're so inclined click on the bell icon to get notified every day of all of my videos. Thanks for watching.